Hello and welcome to the Reaper WRB 2.2 update. In this update, we're tackling several of the frequently requested uh, features. Installing and updating through Repack is back. So as long as you are starting out on 2.2 or coming from 2.1, you can now uh, use Repack to update. In this update, we can now send MIDI editor actions and you can search for MIDI editor actions inside of the Reaper WRB2 editor. So let me make a new uh, web remote. I will do new item action. And to enable sending to the MIDI editor action list, you just hit this toggle here and we can search for something like grid, hit return to uh, start the search and then toggle snap to grid. And we'll make this a toggle and we can choose uh, something like the magnet icon. So let's add in another one, go to the MIDI editor toggle. And now if we search for something like pitch, set CC lane to pitch. Um, and we can do another one like adding in uh, velocity. Just make sure that this toggle is enabled first. And set CC lane to velocity. Cool. So as long as that toggle is on, it's going to use the MIDI editor action list, which in Reaper is accessed when you have a MIDI item open and you go to the action list. Uh, it's just setting this section here to MIDI editor instead of main. So if that toggle is off, it will go to the main. If it's on, it will go to the MIDI editor. So anything in here should be accessible not all of these are in the search, just the uh, the default ones are in search, um, but any of the scripts you can add manually or through a toolbar uh, import. After importing a toolbar, you will need to actually hit the toggle on all of those actions so that it goes to the right action list. So now command states will periodically update. What that means is that, for example, you have the metronome button here, toggle metronome, if this is pressed in on the remote, it's going to be pressed in in your toolbars um, or the action list command state will be set correctly. So if I change this from Reaper's interface, like that, um, you can see that the remote updated as well. So these aren't really linked, but they will update or it will check periodically um, what the states of the displayed buttons should be. So that works with the metronome, it works with the record mode. So I've got this, these buttons for record mode normal or auto punch and just look at the transport bar here. If I change this, and now it's on auto punch, normal. And if I change it here, oops, if I change it here, put this to time selection auto punch and go to my web remote. Now this button is pressed in. So it's a pretty small thing, but it's uh, very helpful to have some feedback on the remote and, and, and it just feels a, a lot more synced up. The next thing to show you is that the marker and region modules, that's this green one here and this purple one here, they will update to show the name or number of the region or marker as the cursor passes them or, or whatever one is nearest to the left of the cursor. So I'll just put in some markers here. I'll give this one a name and I'll put in a region and another region as the project plays. See that the region numbers are updating. And now it's in region one. And now it's in region two. So instead of only displaying when you press the buttons to cycle through or advance to a different uh, marker, it's actually going to display the one that the cursor is currently in. This is another thing that was frequently requested and we're happy to be able to Im implement that. We go into the editor. There's a new module. Uh, I'll just put this on a new tab. And so if I go to item and then selected tracks, nudge, mute, solo. This gives us track volume, mute, and solo, as well as some feedback for um, how many tracks are selected, how many are muted, and how many are soloed in the project. As always, we can change the colors 
Um, we can change the the text and button colors. We can make this really wide if we wanted. And this is just something, it's not really meant for uh, mixing, but it's something that we think would be helpful. You know, this um, saves you having to add in four different buttons. Still probably want to do something like adding in a record, toggle record arm. Um, we can give this an icon. And we can make this a toggle and uh, use two different icons for this. I guess when it's on, it will be filled. And we'll make this red and rename this. And let's also put in an action for selecting the, uh, the tracks. So previous track. Go to previous track. Do a arrow, an up arrow. Add another one. Go to next track. And a down arrow. We can bulk edit. This isn't new, but you may have missed that before. And let's just put in another action to put in a new track. Insert a new track. Do a plus. Sure. And that color. So I'll save this into the database. And so we're saving this file. Make sure it goes into the Reaper www root folder, not inside of the Reaper wrb2 folder. And make sure that you never change this file name. This is the only file name that will work with the database saves. Hit save, and if you already have one, hit replace. Then hit home, and we're going to um, hit this uh, the logo to refresh the page just to make sure that the browser cache is cleared, that sort of thing. So here's my default custom remote, and I've got the new tab, and there's the selected track module, uh, record arm, all these things. Everything that we added in here. So I can hit insert new track a couple times. I can change which track is selected. I can record enable it. I can go to the next track and mute it. I can go to this track, solo it. Um, and if I go back to this um, record enable track, you can see that the icon actually changed and, and the toggle is indented depending on which track is selected. It's roughly a second or half a second that it updates. Just a little convenience thing so you can know that when your track is selected, um, we can see some states for it. Inside of the Reaper WRB2 folder, there's actually a new file called config.js. If we open this up, there are two settings that we can change. The first is changing the ID of the proxy script that we're using to control the track volumes as well as the MIDI editor actions. So if you've installed this and the proxy script ID is not the same as what you see in the action list, and I'll just show you how to find that in the action list. Go to the action list in the main section, Reaper WRB. You would right click, copy selected action command ID go to that config file, and just paste that in and then check that the, uh, the name is the same. And in this case, it is. But just for some reason, if your install of the script didn't, um, didn't match, then you can change it in this file, just save and close, and a Reaper RB, WRB will be able to use that. The next thing is to enable the editor visible no matter which device is connected. Rather than dynamically checking for um, pixel density and size resolution, you can just force it to be on whether your device supports it or not. So this is something that I wanted from my own devices, my iPad Air Generation 3. It's got a nice big screen, but um, just based on the pixel density, the editor wasn't available on it. And with this option here, it is. So you just change this from false to true and that will let you use the editor. Uh, your mileage may vary on whether everything works or everything looks right, but um, 
that is something that is available now. And I know that there are many other users that wanted that. So that's what's new in Reaper WRB 2.2. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you for purchasing Reaper WRB 2.